Hello and welcome to Galahad Reviews. I'm Galahad and today I will be comparing three wireless mice. The Corsair Dark Core RGB Pro. A, look at that guys. I actually said Corsair this time instead of Razer. The Razer Viper Ultimate and the Logitech G Pro Wireless. Now, I know this isn't exactly a fair comparison as the Razer Viper Ultimate and the Logitech G Pro Wireless for around $150, whereas the Corsair Dark Core RGB Pro retails for $80. However, I've gotten multiple requests to do a comparison, so here we are. We are about to deep dive the living crap out of these devices, so grab a drink, perhaps something to eat, maybe snuggle with your dog or grab a blanket because it's going to be a long one. As even though these appear to just be mice, they have a crazy amount of tech inside them, which is why they cost so much. So without further ado, let's dive in. So a quick disclaimer, this is not a sponsored review. I bought the Razer Viper Ultimate and the Logitech G Pro Wireless with my own funds. However, I did receive the Corsair Dark Core RGB Pro for free through Best Buy's Tech Insider program in exchange for an unbiased written review. I decided out of my own volition to also do a video review for it, which you can find in the description below, which will explain the joke at the beginning of this video, along with the reviews for the other two mice and a comparison between the G Pro Wireless and the Razer Viper Ultimate. From here on out, instead of saying the full names, I will be referring to the Corsair Dark Core RGB Pro as the Dark Core, the Razer Viper Ultimate as the Viper, and the Logitech G Pro Wireless as the G Pro. Don't get this confused with the other mice that these brands offer with those same names. The general outline, in case you want to skip ahead in this video, is I'm going to start with discussing the technology behind each product and which is better, and then you can use this information to compare other products with the same specs and tech as that won't change between them. Then I will go into the specifics and how they differ from each other and what product does what best. So let's get nerdy. Starting off with the wireless, which is going to take a while to get through as I'm going to lay to rest the belief that wireless is still bad for gaming. All of them use the 2.4 gigahertz wireless band. They all have incredibly stable connections, which prevent erroneous mouse cursor behavior and prevent any drops from happening, which will also allow you to perform to the top of your ability, even in eSport tournament environments. They also all use frequency switching technology, which goes under different code names since they're at war with each other. Razors is the most straightforward, dubbing theirs adaptive frequency technology. They're like the FBI, as everybody knows them. Corsair calls theirs intelligent frequency shift, which is pretty much the CIA of wireless technology. They do a bunch of shady stuff that later gets leaked to the public. I don't know what Logitech is called because I can't find it. So they've gone dark and you won't know they exist until a black bag comes for you and you're never seen again. They all do the same thing, which scans available wireless channels and then automatically switches to the fastest and most stable. Razer, as Logitech is MIA, says they do this once every millisecond, whereas Corsair goes above and beyond the Call of Duty by doing this twice every millisecond. Now, onto the specifics. Starting off with Logitech's Lightspeed Wireless, all caps because it's important and doesn't want to be forgotten as it is the old man of the group. It came out in 2016 with the Logitech G900, which completely revolutionized the wireless gaming market, as it was the first wireless to solve the fundamental problems of latency, stability, and connectivity. It has been the wireless to beat in the past four years. It is the only one that I know of which has won an eSports championship. Up next is Corsair's Slipstream Wireless, also in all caps, because why not? It first released in January 2019. They report sub one millisecond response times with their wireless, whereas both Razer and Logitech report one millisecond. They have a little infographic showing speeds in microseconds on their website, which says their wireless latency comes in at 867 microseconds, or USEC, which is 0.867 milliseconds, hence the sub one millisecond claim, compared to 2.9 milliseconds, 6.2 milliseconds, and 7.6 milliseconds from wireless technology A, B, and C. They report their wireless reaches 33 feet for their mice and keyboards and 60 feet for their headsets, which I believe is the same for both Logitech and Razer. But for all three of these, the closer you have the receiver, the better. But the most exciting thing is that you can streamline your setup by using a single USB receiver for your mouse, keyboard, and headset through their Slipstream multipoint software, which is still in beta. I don't have multiple Corsair products, so I don't know how well this works, but this is a very welcome feature that is not available 
available with Razer or Logitech. Some other differences are that it sends a redundant signal to ensure the information packet gets to where it needs to go, as sometimes with wireless things get dropped. So for example, if I press left click, it will send that information twice to ensure it gets to the computer. But that doesn't mean that you'll get a double click as it filters out that second input since it's already received it, which is pretty darn awesome. It came busting into the party like the Kool-Aid guy blowing up half the wall and then spreading his delicious sugary drink to all those around him. It released around October 2019 with the Razer Viper Ultimate. They also have an infographic on their website which is measured in microseconds that boasts that their wireless scores less than 195 microseconds compared to the previous industry best of 270 microseconds. But Corsair reports theirs being the fastest at 867 microseconds. So either somebody is lying, they are measuring two different things, or things have changed since January 2019 to October 2019. Regardless, all of those scores are less than a millisecond, which we can calculate by moving the decimal point to the beginning of the scores, with Razer's hyperspeed wireless being 0.19 milliseconds, whoever the second industry best would be 0.27 milliseconds, and Corsair's would be 0.86 milliseconds, which means across the board it's negligible as we humans are incapable of seeing that difference, but technically it appears that Razer's hyperspeed wireless is the fastest. So simply put, all of these wireless technologies work just as well as wired connections with them being as fast if not faster, they all come in at less than one millisecond of latency with Razer's technology technically being the fastest, but Corsair's is neat by sending two packets of information just in case one has ADD and gets lost on the way, whereas Logitech's has been the only one that has been proven in combat. From my testing, they are all very stable and responsive. Razer's wireless has given me zero problem and feels the smoothest and most responsive. Then Corsair's as it is super accurate as well, but I've noticed some skips and stutters on occasion and have also noticed the main complaint people have with the mouse from comments and stuff like that is that they have skips as well or stutters along with their wireless dongle failing altogether. Last, Logitech's as I have noticed some drops about a handful of times, but otherwise I've had no problems. These differences that I feel likely have nothing to do with the wireless tech, but instead the sum of their parts, which include the wireless, switch type, debounce delay, firmware, and or sensor to name a few. I think Razer and Logitech tie this round with Corsair getting half a point due to their wireless being the main complaint, which is also the main selling point of this device. All three of these devices come with a wireless dongle and you can store it inside of them for travel. Before we move on to the next section, we have a bonus section for the Corsair Dark Core RGB Pro, as not only does it support Slipstream Wireless, but it also supports Bluetooth 4.2, which neither the G Pro or the Viper have. The newest version of Bluetooth is 5.0, so it is a generation behind, but we won't hold that against them. If you are gaming with this mouse, you will want to make sure that you are using Slipstream Wireless, as it will be vastly superior to Bluetooth in regard to latency and therefore overall precision, which means Corsair scores an extra extra point. Look at you go, Corsair. If you're enjoying this video so far, make sure to hit that like button. If you're not liking this video so far, hit the dislike button. And of course, if you've been following my content for a while or enjoy this type of content, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on bell notifications so you know when I upload a new video. Next, let's talk about the sensors. We will start off once again with Logitech's as it's the oldest of the bunch with their Hero sensor. This is made in-house by Logitech and is not associated with PixArt in any form. It supports 100 to 16,000 DPI, which can be adjusted in increments of 100 with a max acceleration of greater than 40G and max speeds of greater than 400 inches per second. It has zero smoothing, acceleration, or filtering throughout the entire range. It has a polling rate of 1000 Hz. The resolution accuracy from my research makes it appear to be 98% perhaps 99%. It's considered a flawless sensor. Then comes Corsair's Dark Core, which boasts a custom PixArt PAW3392 optical sensor. It supports 100 to 18,000 DPI with customizable DPI in one step increments, which is unheard of along with hyper polling technology at 2000 Hertz compared to the industry standard of 1000 Hertz. I was unable to find the specs of inches per second or how many Gs it can handle. So assuming perhaps incorrectly that this is similar to the PixArt 
our PMW 3390, whose specs read 100 to 16,000 DPI with 450 inches per second and 50G speed with 99.4% resolution accuracy. Last up is the absolute powerhouse of a sensor, Razer's Focus Plus, aka the Pixar 3399, which is the best sensor and is a masterpiece. I'm a big fan because it has deeply won me over from my testing. It just feels ultra responsive and comments from my other videos show that users often agree with me that their aim improved and that it feels ultra responsive once they started using it. So it's not just me. It supports 120,000 DPI with a max acceleration of 50G with a max speed of 650 inches per second, which means that it can move 54 feet in a second and still be accurate. What? It also comes with smart tracking, which syncs the exact intervals that your PC extracts information, so it's always the most up to date. And it also allows you to adjust both landing distance and liftoff distance, which is the first time I've ever seen this in a mouse. All of this together makes for an insanely accurate sensor that leaves the rest of the competition behind. Both the Logitech Hero Sensor and the PAW3392 also support surface tuning, with Logitech's being automatic and Corsair's being manual, but you must have it hardwired for Corsair's version. Neither support adjustable landing distances. So ranking, the Focus Plus scores first by a good margin. I'd argue the Corsair PAW3392 scores second, as the sensor does appear to be superior spec-wise with the Hero scoring third. My testing has also shown this to be accurate as I have won multiple Apex Legend matches with each of them and my scores and aim trainers are similar, with the Razer Viper always scoring higher and being more consistent, whereas the Corsair and Logitech trade consistently. However, all three are flawless sensors and will give you the ability to perform to the top of your ability as the differences that I could feel could be attributed to a number of other things including placebo. So a full point to Razer and half a point to Corsair and then Logitech. So of course, Sawyer is at 2, Logitech is 1.5, and Razer is 2. Moving on to the battery, all three of these mice use low power consumption to extend battery life. Starting with the bottom of the barrel, based off the spec sheets, we have the Corsair Dark Core that lasts for 16 hours with standard illumination and up to 36 hours without. Logitech is up next with 48 hours with default lighting and up to 60 hours without. Last, we have Razer, which is up to 70 hours with lighting off. Now, I have not tested all of these with a timer because I'm far too lazy. From my real world testing, I charge the Dark Court the most often with the G Pro coming next and the Viper coming last. The Dark Core I have to charge multiple times per week and would say the battery life is meh, all right. Whereas the G Pro is about twice per week, which I would rate as great. And last, the Viper is about once a week, which is also great. However, others have reported that the G Pro lasts a lot longer than their Viper does. But from my testing, the winner is Razer Viper, then Logitech G Pro, and then the Corsair Dark Core. So the scoring so far is Corsair 2, Logitech 2, Razer 3. Moving on to comfort. First is the Corsair Dark Core RGB Pro, which is a medium to large ergonomic mouse, which is made for right hand use only. It supports all grip styles as well, but predominantly palm as fingertip and claw has increased fatigue due to the weight. It also has modular sides where you can make it flat or flare out. It has a rubber coating, which I've found helped improve my grip, but others say it makes it worse and is a normal complaint for the mouse. Next up is Logitech G Pro Wireless, which is made for claw, fingertip or palm grip. It is an ambidextrous mouse with modular parts, which means you can add or remove the side buttons. It has very minimal curves with just a mild amount in the middle with a pronounced hump in the back, which is why all grip styles work well for it. But due to the lack of any type of shape, a lot do not find it to be all that comfortable. It is made of what feels like ABS plastic, which feels good, but some report due to this, they don't get the best grip. Last is the Razer Viper Ultimate, which is medium sized mouse made specifically for claw or fingertip. It does not support palm very well due to it having the lack of a hump on the back, but if you have smaller hands, it will likely work just fine for that. It is also ambidextrous, but does not have modular parts. At times, clicking the right buttons happens due to this, which takes a bit of acclimating too. More on the side buttons later. This has more curves with it tapering quite a bit in the middle and extending in the front and back, which makes it universally more comfortable for people. Last, it has rubber on the sides to help provide grip. They appear to be built into the device over just glued there, which means I don't think it will peel over time. The overall feel of the 
plastic is like PBT. My personal ranking would be the Corsair Dark Core, then the Razer Viper, then the Logitech G Pro. But since this is complete personal preference, they all score a point. So this leads us to Corsair having three points, Logitech having three points, and Razer having four points. Moving on to the clicks, the Logitech G Pro Wireless comes with a cheap Chinese mechanical switch that is prone to develop double clicks. This issue is prolific and affects 10 to 15% of the mice in some way, which is extremely high and a major negative for this mouse. However, the overall actuation is very small and the clicks are crisp and tight, which feel excellent due to Logitech's mechanical tensioning system. If you're going for how many clicks you can spam per minute, this guy is your winner for you Minecrafters out there. The side buttons are also excellent and easily reachable and are modular, which means that you can take them off or put them on. The Corsair Dark Core comes with Omron mechanical switches, which are rated for 50 million clicks. I didn't get an exact percentage for failure rate as only two people complained of it and I didn't feel like doing the math, which means it has the lowest failure rate for clicks out of the three. They have a medium amount of travel, which is average for most mice and are very crisp and satisfying. All clicks feel premium, crisp and satisfying. The only complaint one might have is the DPI buttons on the left click could be clicked on accident depending on your finger slash hand placement. Others also mentioned that the side buttons are sometimes difficult to reach. I haven't personally had this problem and find them to be ideal. Last up is the Razer Viper Ultimate, which comes with optical switches, which have some sort of defect 4.3% of the time, which is usually considered crunching, creaking, or altogether breaking. A potential fix for this is holding down whichever button has the abnormality with some pressure and see if it resolves. If you have a Razer Viper Ultimate with this issue and try that fix, I would love to hear your findings if it worked or not in the comment section below, so I can recommend it to others users if it does end up working. Mine is fine after eight months with no abnormalities. It is rated for 100 million clicks and is immune to double clicks. I find the clicks to be crisp and satisfying on all the buttons, but others report they feel mushy and not as crisp as mechanical switches. This one is difficult to rank as well because it comes down to personal preference, but objectively, I think I would say based on failure rates, I would give it to the Corsair, then Razer, and then Logitech, as all of the clicks feel very similar with a bonus going to Razer as they are optical, which not only makes them faster, negligibly, but also immune to double clicks. Personal ranking, in case you care, would be the Razer Viper Ultimate, the Corsair Dark Core, and then the Logitech G Pro, but for scoring, we will go with the objective ranking, which brings the score for Corsair up to four, for Logitech three, and for Razer 4.5. Moving on to the weight, this one is straightforward. The Corsair is dramatically heavier, coming in at 133 grams, with the Logitech G Pro Wireless being 80 grams, and the Razer Viper Ultimate being 74 grams. In my opinion, lighter is better, especially for first-person shooters, so the winner goes to the Viper, then the G Pro, and then the Dark Core. Which brings our rating to Corsair 4, Logitech 3.5, and Razer 5.5. Moving on to the lighting slash software slash RGB accuracy. So scoring will be based off of three categories, the first being the number of zones, then the accuracy of the lighting, and last, the software. The Corsair Dark Core comes with nine zones of lighting. This has the second most accurate RGB. All nine zones can be customized through Corsair's IQ software. IQ is the best software out of the three as it is very user-friendly and stable, but it does use quite a bit of resources because it does system monitoring. Up next is the Logitech G Pro, which has two zones of lighting, which includes the G logo and the DPI buttons on the bottom of the mouse. This has the least accurate RGB, but it is still very good. Bonus goes to the DPI disappearing into the mouse when off. Each zone can individually be customized through G Hub software, which is the worst software of the three, as the user friendliness of the program is atrocious. I am sure that I will face some flack for that down in the comment section. It is, however, very stable and rarely crashes. Last is Razer Viper with one zone, which is their logo. It gets a bonus because when the lighting is off, that logo disappears into the mouse, which is pretty neat. This has the most accurate RGB, which is customizable with Razer Synapse 3. The software is the second best out of the three. It uses quite a bit of resources and is prone to getting locked up or having issues or interfering with other programs. However, if you aren't experiencing issues, it works works well, is user friendly, and has a ton of features, which once again, I will probably get some flack in the comment section because a lot of people are going to disagree with me on that and say that Razer Synapse 3 is completely horrible 
and blah, 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 blah. But I enjoy Razer Synapse 3. I think, like I said, when it's not giving you issues, that it works really well and is set up and is a powerful program. So, so ranking time. First up is the amount of lighting zones with Corsair winning, then Logitech, and then Razer. Next is color accuracy, which goes to Razer, then Corsair with Logitech coming in third. Last software is Corsair, Razer, and then Logitech. So going through the ratings, Corsair is at five, Logitech four, then Razer 5.5 for the first category. Moving on to the second category, Corsair is at 5.5, Logitech is at four, and Razer is at 6.5. Moving into the last category, Corsair is 6.5 with Logitech being four and Razer being seven. Moving on to the accessories, Corsair comes with a USB-A to a USB-C cable that is braided but is stiff but appears high quality, along with a modular right side. Logitech comes with a USB-A to a micro USB rubber cable that is relatively malleable that plugs into a dongle with modular side buttons. Razer comes with a USB-A to micro USB Hyperflex cable, which is very flexible, along with a charging dock that holds the wireless dongle, your Hyperflex cable, and RGB lighting, which means Razer wins, then Logitech, and then Corsair, but I am happy that Corsair is using a USB-C cable, and I wish the other two followed in that suit. So Corsair has 6.5 points, Logitech 4.5 and Razer has eight. Moving on to the feet, the Corsair Dark Core and Logitech G Pro come with black PTFE feet, whereas the Razer Viper comes with 100% virgin grade PTFE. I find the virgin grade PTFE to be superior and glide better, which makes it the winner. Corsair has more pads on theirs. All three of them glide well, but both Corsairs and Logitechs can be a bit scratchy before they break in, but I didn't notice a difference between them, so I would rate that a tie, so half a point to each. So Corsair now has seven points, Logitech has five points, and Razer has nine points. Moving on to the buttons, the Corsair Dark Core comes with eight buttons, whereas the Logitech G Pro and Razer Viper come with eight. But I'm going to call it seven as one of them is on the bottom and isn't usable in normal use. Also, with them being on the right side of the mouse, which can be removed completely on the Logitech G Pro Wireless, since it's modular, it is actually five. The winner is the Corsair Dark Core because all eight of those buttons are easily accessible and comfortable to reach, with Logitech scoring second due to the modular nature and Razer coming in last. So that brings the total score for Corsair to eight, Logitech 5.5, and Razer to nine. Moving on to the scroll wheel, all three of these mice have excellent scroll wheels that have definitive steps with good center clicks that require a moderate amount of force. Corsair's is a bumpy rubber wheel, Logitech's is a full plastic design with little ridges, and Razer's is also plastic but with bumpy lines. I enjoy all of them greatly, so would call this a tie. So that brings Corsair to 9, Logitech to 6.5, and Razer to 10. Moving on to the on-off switch, it is located on the bottom of the mouse for all three of them. The Logitech mouse is the easiest and most comfortable to turn on off and only requires a light amount of force with your thumb but it is not light enough that when you are using it that it would shut off by rubbing against the surface. Up next is the Corsairs, as it is at the rear of the device, which doesn't make it as comfortable to turn on and off, but is doable with your thumb only and also requires a light amount of force. Last is Razors, as it is very stiff and requires the use of a nail to effectively turn on and off, and it's also in a semi-weird position, which makes Logitech the winner, then Corsair, then Razor, which brings the scoring to Corsair at 9.5, Logitech at 7.5, and Corsair at 10. So conclusion time, if you are still here and not super upset that somehow the Logitech G Pro came in third, which is just as surprising to me as it probably is to you, I appreciate you being open minded and not just immediately disliking my video saying F you and closing your browser. At the beginning of this video, I for sure thought that the Razer Viper Ultimate would be first with the Logitech G Pro Wireless coming in in a close second and the Corsair Dark Court RGB Pro coming in third. That would be my personal recommendation and my personal ranking even despite testing them all is how I would rank them. But objectively, I have to say that the first goes to the Razer Viper Ultimate, then the Corsair Dark Core RGB Pro, and then the Logitech G Pro Wireless coming in last. But alas, I guess that is what you get when something releases after something else, as it can pick up on where it fell short and improve upon it, which is what happened in this case, as the Logitech G Pro Wireless is the old man of the group released in August 2018, with the Razer Viper Ultimate releasing on October 
18th, 2019, and last, the Corsair Dark Core RGB Pro released on April 7th of 2020, which actually makes it the newest addition to the bunch, so I would also expect it to be one of the best. Personally, if you are more of an average user and do some video gaming that isn't mostly focused on FPS and competitive play along with the normal browsing and stuff, I think the Corsair Dark Core RGB Pro is an excellent choice. The same goes if you are more limited on funds. However, if you are very focused on gaming in general and don't need a bunch of buttons and are focused primarily on first person shooters and competitive play, I would skip the Corsair Dark Core RGB Pro and go with either the Logitech G Pro Wireless or the Razer Viper Ultimate as they are vastly superior in that realm due to the weight. But as I explained through this whole video, they are all excellent mice and you should go with whichever one fits your preferences the most. The main warnings for each mice are the following. With the Corsair Dark Core RGB Pro, it has a problem with the wireless dongle dying and having some skipping slash stuttering. I found that the skipping slash stuttering resolved once I moved the puck closer, but you'll probably have to buy an extender separately as they don't include one in the box. Whereas the Logitech G Pro Wireless suffers greatly from the double click issue due to the cheap mechanical switches they use. When it comes to the Razer Viper Ultimate, people struggle with enjoying the click presence the most because some people report it doesn't feel as crisp as the other two and can come across as mushy. Others say the quality control is poor on it as well, which means there is a trade-off no matter which mouse you choose. If I were to rank them according to car brands, I'd say Logitech is an Audi with simple elegant designs and high performance. Then Razer is a BMW as they are sleek and shiny with excellent performance, but expensive and prone to repairs. Last, you have Corsair, which is like a luxury SUV brand. They are heavy, attractive, and large, but premium. If you made it this far, tell me your favorite animal in the comment section below and I'll reply. In the description below, I have my Amazon Associates links for each one of these mice. By clicking that link, I earn a small commission off of anything you buy at no extra charge to you. This is an excellent way you can help support this channel in my efforts to continue to buy tech as it is a very expensive hobby. It is never necessary to use those links and I only ask you to do it out of your own volition. With that said, if you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a dislike. And of course, if you've been following my content for a while, please do hit that subscribe button and turn on bell notifications. I will see you and your beautiful face on the next one. Peace out and God bless. Thank you.